Hello, good evening and welcome to your most authoritative business analysis show, Business Focus, right here on TV3. My name is Park Yasari. Thank you very much for your time and for joining us here for the program. Now, in the first two quarters of 2019, the Ghana Stock Exchange reportedly continued to recall the same bearish performance that it suffered from 2018. This has been attributed to the rather drastic financial sector cleanup, which is said to be giving investors cold feet. Now, the situation has also affected insurance providers as many are uncertain which financial institution to engage with. Well, tonight we'll be discussing the issues in detail as well as to find ways to understand how collectively we can support the local bars as well as the insurance sector. We'll also be bringing you the mover segments, business trends, trader slots and tech today as well as the very latest on the commodities market. But first, as usual, let's begin with summaries of stories that made headlines in the world of business over the past seven days. Right, so you're welcome back to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. This is Business Focus. Well, so some call it um, financial crisis, others call it bank runs. Now, we know that bank runs often occur when people, lots of people, you know, make their way to the commercial banks to withdraw money all because uh, they believe that the banks cannot meet their withdrawals. A lot of the times when you know you have uh, financial crisis, the ripple effect is enormous. Uh, some call it the contingent effect, you know, others call it the ripple effect because you know the financial sector is a heart of the economy and it touches on various sectors. Tonight what we're seeking to do is to find out how the Ghana's banking crisis has impacted on a number of, you know, sectors within the economy. We know, for instance, that when, uh, you know, there's um, a bank crisis and a lot of people withdraw their monies from the banks, the, the banks become illiquid. And so what happens often is that 
the banks are unable to lend to the private sector. Now, once they're unable to lend to the private sector, it means that there is little investment. Now, when there's little investment, it affects economic activity and affects economic growth. Now, once economic growth is affected, there's high, you know, unemployment. And once there's high unemployment, effectively, uh, government, you know, in, uh, in terms of uh, taxes to government is also reduced. Once taxes to government is reduced, there's little investor confidence and essentially, the economy is affected. Tonight, I've got in the studio Christopher Bwedi Mensa. He's the chief executive officer of Serene Insurance. He knows a lot about the insurance industry. We want to find out how this banking crisis has impacted on the financial sector. Later on, we'd also be, uh, try and touch base with Benjamin Bright Aka. He's a general manager of UMB Stock Brokers because we also know that over the period, um, you know, financial stocks or stocks in general have been affected, they've been impacted uh, generally. So, uh, Christopher, thank you very much for your time and good to have you in the studio. Tell us generally about the insurance sector. We know that um, uh, you also have to meet a minimum capital by 2020, uh, which is, um, you know, a rule that's just been set by the, um, is it the NIC? It's actually 2021. 2021. Tell me about it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and good evening to your viewers. All right. And thank you once again for having me in your studio. The minimum capital, I think, the NRC has communicated. Right. The media has picked it up. Right. And we know that we need to meet the minimum capital of 15 million Ghana cities. Right. Uh, and they're in categories, I know. Yeah. In yeah. terms of the amounts that insurance companies, so we've got insurance companies, we've got the insurance and the yeah. brokers, yes. Right. Uh, we, as an insurance company, we are supposed to provide 15 million Ghana cities from the 15 million we have now. Currently. Yeah, and we are supposed to do this by June 2021. Mm. Yeah. What's been the uh, general response from the industry? Has it been all embracing? Yes, yes or no, because I know, I really don't want to talk about the mm. minimum capital. Mm. The reason being the commission has communicated. GIA, that is the Ghana Insurance Association, is still having a conversation with the commission. Mm. So I really don't want to talk mm. about the don't, minimum don't, capital. Don't mind. As uh, it is, the insurance companies are supposed to provide 15 million Ghana cities. Mm. Reinsurance are to do 125. The brokers are to provide about a million, no, 500,000. Mm. And the reinsurance brokers are to provide a million Ghana cities. Mm. So that's how it stands now. OK, and you don't mm. want to make any further comments I about I really it. don't want to talk okay, about that's the minimum fair. capital. Uh, let's <laughs> talk about the performance of the insurance industry. Uh, ever since the financial, um, how do you call it, the central bank called it the, the cleansing up of mm -hmm. Ghana's uh, financial sector. What has been the response from the um, insurance industry? I think it has, it's, it's been good so far because when you look at our total premium income from 2016 to now, it keeps on increasing. In 2016, the whole industry was about two billion. In 2017, it was about 2.4 billion in terms of premium income. And 2018, it's just a little under 3 billion Ghana cities. Mm. So, so far you can see that there's a growth. When you look at 2017 and now, 2017 there was industry, industry growth of about 26%, and 2018 is about 21%. And you can see that consistently the industry is growing somehow. Mm. Yeah. We know that insurance companies do a lot of investment. Yeah. And, and when I talked about the impact of financial crisis, mm. one of the very you know, clear impacts is that financial confidence you know, obviously comes to an all-time low. And we know that here in Ghana, the central bank has been doing a lot to boost up confidence within the industry and, 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 and so, so on and so forth. For the insurance industry, how do you manage, you know, in instances where we have, you know, low investor confidence, how do you manage? Yeah, I think, thank you. In the insurance industry, because we are highly regulated as to how to do your investment, you know, there are directives from usually from the commission as to how we should have our investment with the, these financial institutions and all that. So this banking crisis having effect on an insurance company would depend on the kind of mess of investment we have with one particular institution, mm, mm. you know. Other than that, I don't see any problem with this crisis at the financial sector or the banking sector mm. having effect on the insurance company. Mm. But it depends, again, it depends. If serial insurance, we will not do that anyway, you know, that we invest maybe 10 million Ghana cities with one bank and the bank is going down, definitely it will affect us somehow because mm. of liquidity, right. you know. But in terms of liquidity, industry as a general, we've not been affected at all. 
Right. You know? Because we think that we are doing the right investment and we are going by the regulators, directives and all that. And I don't think if I have three million Ghana cities with a bank and that bank should go down, it will affect my liquidity position. Mm -hmm. It will not have no, it will not have any effect on liquidity at all. Mm -hmm. And in general, you know, because like I said, because we are highly regulated, some of these things Every month we are sending a report to the uh, regulator and all that, so they know the kind of investment we have with uh, these financial institutions, mm. you know. Because the thing is that when you look at our claim history as a pair, the insurance commission report, we realize that every day there's an average of about 1.1 million Ghana cities in terms of claims. And if our liquidity position is not strong, we will not be able to meet that kind of claims coming on board. Because I guess a lot of the day. time what happens is that, yeah. you know, once, you know, these banks make investments mm -hmm. and people come and join their funds, mm -hmm. then you have lots of investments that are locked up yeah. and so you have very little free money to give out to people and that's what causes the, the liquidity crunch within the system. I know, mm. but what I'm trying to say here is mm. that we are not trying to, because I, for instance, I will not invest let's say five million, 10 million with one bag. Okay. You know, you maybe spread. you spread the risk. Okay. Because we are risk managers, mm. we we'll make sure that everything that we, are, we calculate the risk, we we'll, we'll assess the position of every financial institution. We we'll right. spread the risk. So if one bank is going down, it doesn't mean necessarily it will affect us. Right. You know, right. but if we do the unthinkable thing, mm. and then maybe we put all our money in one particular bank right. or something, and the bank goes down, then definitely that will bring some liquidity issues. Right. You know, right. that will bring some liquidity. What it therefore means is that you have a locking fund somewhere, you are not able to assess it. Right. There's a claim that you need to meet. Right. You know, there are other management expenses that, that will bring a difficulties. Right. But at its time, as industry, mm. we don't have that kind of difficulties. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, Chris Boydu, I see yeah. you of Serene uh, Insurance. Meanwhile, the Ghana Composite Index, uh, we're told, has lost 11% uh, since January and over 70% of traded values year on year. Now, this according to report by the Ghana Stock Exchange. In the first two quarters, Quarters of 2019, the Ghana Stock Exchange reportedly continued to record the same bearish performance that it suffered from in 2018. Well, this has been attributed to the rather uh, drastic financial sector cleanup, which is said to be giving investors cold feet. Let's take a listen to the managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Eko Afedi. Once you find bond markets doing very well, then you have the invest relationship uh, coming in for those who know how fi financial markets work. Um, for, for the equity side or share side, we've had prices of some of the companies going down and just have gone up. So we have the index is about 6% for the financial stocks uh, index, which is negative, then one well, negative term for um, the uh, the other the entire market but markets go up and down or down depending on what happens to the economy what happens to um, the, the company itself what happens to the appetite of investors as to whether to buy or not so when you cast your mind uh, to two years back this market went up by 52 percent and most people didn't look at it and uh, so you see markets go up and down i can assure you that with the economy improving, inflation is still below 10%, we're going to see the market bounce back. Right, so you have the managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Eko Afezi, uh, speaking there. Uh, let me come back in studio, Christopher Boydemans, as the chief executive officer of Serene Insurance. Uh, Chris, so uh, you have the managing director of the Ghana yes, Stock I Exchange did. talk yeah. about you know, the impact of, of such uh, you know, crisis. What's your own assessment? Well, as an insurance company, we also do invest on the stock market because we are allowed to actually also invest on the stock market, buy stocks and other things. So if the stock market is not doing well in 2019, you know, that's half year, we are talking about half year report that mm -hmm. the, stock, the managing director was given. Mm -hmm. Yes, if an insurance company have an investment on the stock market or has purchased some stocks or equity, then once they are going down, the probability that is that it may also go down because the return on it. But because we as an industry, because you will not go and buy stocks alone with your money that you have, you diversify on other uh, portfolios and all that. So somehow you may think that maybe the stock market is not doing well, you know, but because of the mi uh, the mixture of uh, the mis investment that we have, this one will compensate the other 
and it makes up the state. Like I said earlier, we are works managers and we do assessment about the economy in general and every business that we underwrite. So as underwriters, we will consider all these things and make sure that we are doing the right thing. Uh, how much and of this you know, has to do with investor confidence? Because to be fair to the central bank, I think there's, there's the management of these uh, financial crises has you know, a way been, 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 been handled quite well. We know that um, interest rates have gone down over the period. We've seen interest yeah. rates go down. But of course, return on investments have also gone down <laughs> you know, on, on the flip side. How much of this has to do with investor confidence? I think it's good for our economy because if interest rate is uh, going down and the return is also going down somehow because it has been the case that usually you realize that the interest rate is really up mm. you and know, then return on investment and the is return high. is also very high mm -hmm. you know it compensates each other right. somehow mm. you know i believe in the other way whilst, whilst interest rate is going down business people have access to credit they are able to run their business and they are not paying much that will even enable them to pay back the loans or whatever facility that they pick from the bank mm. but once the interest is high i'm paying 30 percent how much am i making from the business that I'm running. So it gets to a point I'm unable to pay the loan or the facility that I've gone for, you know, and it brings about these liquidity issues mm. to the banks and other things. Mm. So I believe that what is happening right now is good for our economy, and mm. I think that maybe if we are able to sustain this in the next years ahead of us, we are going to see a very robust economy. In, you know, right. in uh, we're still hoping to speak to Benjamin Bright Aka, who is the general manager of UMB Stockbrokers, to give us a, a sense, you know, a, a much broader perspective of of the stock market and its performance over the period, <laughs> and relative to the uh, financial crisis. But I've still got with me Christopher Boydo, of the chief executive officer of uh, Serene Insurance. Chris, what can you say about the future of the insurance industry? Penetration is still at a record low. Thank you. I think when you look at Africa in general, mm. insurance penetration is very, very low. Uh, the reason being that I think we need to do more education. You know, we need to let our clients have confidence in us that when there's claim, legitimate one, we are going to honor it. You know, because the insurance penetration, the commission too will have to help in terms of education mm. because they are there to educate the public. If you look at our penetration level, it's just about. Uh, about 2%, you know, as an industry, which is very, very low. Mm. What we can therefore do to help, there are these compulsory insurance that we must enforce uh, the, the regulation, like public places being insured and all that. All these places are not insured. If we are to uh, enforce this regulation, it will enable the industry to mop up uh, premium income mm. coming into our industry. So mm. I believe that we need to do a lot of education, enforce some of these laws, and also build capacity to do some of these things. Mm. You know, because sometimes, like we have oil in Ghana, most of this premium income end up elsewhere. I agree that, yes, insurance will spread the risk. And it doesn't matter. Uh, and on, that, on that point, I'll come back to you to ask a very critical question. Yeah. A question that probably you're hiding <laughs> from uh, when we started this program. Uh, let's take a listen to a uh, research analyst with First Bank, Edina Myatape, who attributes the situation to uh, investors essentially cashing out, you know, from the system. The stock market has been on the downtrend. At the end of the first quarter of 2019, we saw a loss of 5%. And the stock market deepened losses to 7% at the end of June. And now we are seeing a loss of 11%. And the reason has been this. Apart from the fact that investors look at the returns the stocks have posted when they release their financial results, they also look at happenings in the economy. We are all very much aware of the cleanup exercise for the financial institutions. A couple of months back, we saw the closure or the revocation of the license of over 300 microfinance institutions. And two weeks ago, we saw the revocation of the license of 23 savings and loans companies. So investors are looking at all these developments and it's affecting their sentiments. So instead of us seeing the prices of stock go up, like for petroleum stocks like Guel and Total, they have posted very impressive results. And financial stocks like GCB, Ecobank, um, Societe General, we are rather seeing investors cash out. They are selling these stocks because of the happenings in the industry. 
All right, so uh, you heard uh, Edinam um, Ahmed Fair there. So obviously experts are worried about the impact of the trend on the general health of the economy. Um, let me get back in studio and, 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 and interact more with Chris. Chris, uh, you heard, um, you know, Edinam uh, and what she said about uh, what you make of, five. yeah. Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, yeah, it's expected, of course, once there's, there's a run on some of the banks, mm. you know, and banks are being closed down and all that, the investors' confidence will definitely go down. Mm. As they don't know what to do. People may have the money. Where do we invest? Because they are not even sure about and they are not expect to know mm. where, what to do and all that. So definitely it will have some impact in, in the general economy. You think this is going to generally affect the savings culture the more? Yeah, I think so. People will be very careful as to which institution to actually keep their money and all that. Mm. People will be careful. Mm. And I hope you'll be careful as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just before we went uh, on that, to take that clip, mm. you, you talked about um, the capacity, capacity. <laughs> and uh, one of the difficulties for people who've, who've studied the insurance industry, you know, with this latest um, uh, capitali was a recapitalization, recapitalization by the NIC is that, listen, when you subject all insurance companies to this strict minimum capital requirement, what we're going to see is that a lot of the local indigenous companies will be wiped out and our insurance industry will be overtaken or be taken over by the foreign, the foreign firms. You know, do you see this, this also emanating? <sighs> yes and no. Let me put it that way. Yes and no. Yes okay. and no. Because it can happen, yes. Because once you are not able to meet the minimum capital requirements of 50 million Ghana cities as an insurance company. And the chances are that either you merge, you know, or, or maybe swallowed. somebody buy you off mm -hmm. and all that. And mm -hmm. usually any investor who is going to put 50 million Ghana cities, you know, now, okay, there's 50 million Ghana for the minimum capital requirement. He will scan the, the economy in general. What kind of return am I going to get in the next three, four, five years from the 50 million? Is it, does it worth it for me to do this in an insurance industry or there are other opportunities that I can exploit? You know, investors will always look at all these things before making a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, elsewhere, the minimum capital of 50 million, what are the minimum capital for other uh, uh, countries close to us? Is it the same 10 million Ghana cities? 10 million dollars? If you convert the 50 million, relatively, it's just mm -hmm. about 10 million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, would people be willing to invest that kind of money? These are the questions. What that do you think? I think, yes, it's good. Uh, I don't have problem with it. I, I, I cannot have problem with what the commission is saying, prepare their own analysis and all that. But one thing will always come to play. Would investors be willing to do this kind of investment? Mm. You know, because I, for one, maybe I would, my board will agree that, okay, these are the things. You know, can other companies also say the same? Mm. You know, are the shareholders willing to And you've got to submit a plan of capitalization to oh, the NIC yeah, as well? Yeah. yeah. Mm. That was about, that was, that was to happen last Friday, I think. I don't know the position of other insurance companies. But you have but done it. We yours. have done it, yeah. Mm. yeah. Does it look good? Well, yes, of course. It looked mm. good. It looked very good. Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. It was interesting that, you know, again, the NIC said you cannot use any fiscal assets to, 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 to help you to yeah. meet up the capital. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you say to that? I don't have any difficulties with that because we are in business. Uh, so if you've got any property, you've got to sell it and, 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 and have a physical, physical cash. cash. I think right. the idea is to just to make the liquidity position very strong right. and able to take more risk mm. and our retention level going high and all right. that. Yeah. Uh, so I mentioned that experts uh, will be worried about the impact of the trend on the general health of the economy, uh, but they are optimistic it will improve before the year ends. The reason why I'm a bit optimistic is that uh, if you look at the share prices, you know, uh, what we call the prices are, share prices are very low at, at the moment. So, uh, and also it's important to highlight that all these poor performances that we are seeing uh, on the stock market, it's not driven by fundamentals. Uh, to be honest, uh, I can tell you that 
uh, company's profitabilities are actually increasing if you compare to last year. So we expected that uh, the stock market will respond to this improved profitability of the listed companies. But that has not been the case so far. But that does not also mean that it can happen. It can't happen. Actually, we are looking forward to more positive um, uh, earnings results in Q3 and also in Q4. So, I mean, I think that looking at where share prices are, some investors may like to take advantage of the lower prices and that can possibly push the stock prices up and then uh, uh, push the entire market up. All right, so head of, uh, head of research at Data Bank, Alex Boahin, uh, stated his position there. Uh, let's quickly wrap up uh, with Christopher Wiedemann, the Chief Executive Officer of Serene Insurance. Chris, what do you think the, the next, um, the last quarter of the year will pretend for the industry generally? The last quarter the last of the quarter year. year. Yeah, insurance is a season. What actually happened is that the first quarter, almost the first two quarter, will make a lot of revenue. The third quarter usually is so from time in memorial and mm. the last quarter november december is okay so we expect that we will see some growth in maybe the last quarter especially november and december mm. we expect to do a lot of renewals and all that so mm. i'm speaking as a in the non-life industry, not a life company. Life. All yeah. right. Thank you very much, uh, Christopher Bwedimenta. Mm -hmm. is a chief executive officer of Serene Insurance, uh, helping us to do some analysis on the insurance industry and how uh, it's, it's been impacted, uh, if you like, uh, by the uh, financial crisis that started uh, somewhere in, uh, was, was, I think it was late 2015. What? Yeah. The, we, we actually had the, the Clinton up start two years ago, but the whole crisis began somewhere in 2015, uh, thereabout. Yeah. Uh, if you read the Bank of Ghana's report on the financial sector, I'm sure you'd, you'd know that. So uh, we're going to wrap up with uh, uh, Christopher. When we return, we still got business trends. We've got tech today and we've got the trader slots. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. It's time now for Tech Today, and we're telling you how to maximize Microsoft Teams. Communication has become very important for any business. You can't be in a business and not converse. And because of that, and the advent of messaging platforms, a lot of us have resorted to using WhatsApp, or Messenger or Telegram or anything to chat in companies. But those of us that want, don't want to do that, we do status meetings and things like that, which takes a long time. Sometimes, if the person is working remote, they still have to move from their house all the way and get to the office, come and have businesses. But this is the tech age, and you don't need to move people all the way from your homes to come and have businesses if you want to have a business conversation and not get them distracted in their WhatsApp or Telegram accounts. Then there's something more important you need to move on to, right? So. Today on Tech Today, I want to talk about Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams is sort of this unified communications platform that is good for businesses. That would enable you to add all your staff in there. The, thing, the good thing is you can, you can chat um, via text, you can chat via video, you can even send them files and everything, all of them. They're very professional. Because it is a Microsoft product, obviously, you have Microsoft Office also in, integrated into the system. So all you need to do to have Microsoft Teams is to visit teams.microsoft.com and download the desktop version of the app onto your PC or your Mac and then install it. Then download the mobile app as well on your Android or your iOS and then install. Now, once that is done, you create your company in there and then you can just start adding your teams. This would enable anybody who works remote to also be able to participate officially in meetings or anything that you want to talk about. This is how we round up on Tech Today. My name is Kwame. See you again in the next one. Now away from technology, let's go straight to the market now. And today on Trader Slot, we take you to the Kaneshi market, the fish market, as we help you understand the various types of fish and season and how much they are sold for. Hello there, welcome to another edition of Trader Slots on Business Focus. 
Today, we are here at the Kaneshi Fish Market to find out which fish is in season. So, I said, you know, no, I need you to know what you know. So, I've been in the way, I've been in the way, I've been in the way, I've been in the way. The homawa season brings with a lot of herring, and so that is most in season. Nijia money, no jinon wake you afi. Ena deka pe six million. Because of some climatic changes and other factors, fish is usually expensive this time. Even to a twenty-five. Four pieces twenty-five. Fish is big fat ice nam se no. When you ebet me siwo. You can refrigerate, dry or fry. Depending on how long you want to keep them. Go ahead and add some protein to your food. That will be all for now. See you next week. Thanks very much, Grace. How much are you for the trader slot? Up next is the mover segment. Hello and welcome to today's mover segment with me, Nuang Falong. Our mover today fell in love with her grandmother's vast collection of crobo beads when she was just a child. It would later become her inspiration to establish Qualipo Accessories, a fashion brand that tries to bridge the gap between locally made crobo beads and high fashion. I went into beads because it was accessible, I'm crobo, is it for me to, you know, speak, speak the language, talk to the people, understand the heritage of it. Qualipo explains that some of the challenges faced have been the lack of funding for fashion projects low local patronage and an unfriendly tax system. Now in the um, entrepreneurial space there are a lot of agri projects and science projects and that's where the main focus is. How feasible was it to set up your business, register your business, uh, taxes? Does it make economic sense? For me it's a leading face because you can't really say I am earning 3,000 every month, so I'm paying this much. It's something that is, is, is going to be worked on. So as a startup, I think one, there should be a lot of education on how startups should, or how taxes should apply to certain types of startups. Because all this a startup, each, everyone is unique. Sometimes the information you get is just lump sum but i think in the future if we really want to grow the um entrepreneur economy we should really break it down into segments because or into categories because each um, category has its own peculiarities and like it works differently so you think the GRE should be innovative in approaching taxation i think of i small think businesses? I th yes i think they're already being innovative but sometimes cascading the information down mm -hmm. properly is where the challenge is. The brand sources 80% of its beads from the Krobo community as it aims to ensure the cycle of wealth is maintained locally. We do want to say Krobo, um, Koforidia bead market, and also I have a, a bead maker who turns my raw material, which is the glass, into beads for me. So there are certain works that, um, I think something like this, for instance, these oranges and these black bits, he would have produced them specifically for my design. And we are actually helping the economy in two ways. One, we are working with people in the villages who wouldn't normally have access. Materials used in production are eco-friendly to protect the environment. Um, I'm also collecting waste. First Saturday of the month, you can get me at a fair in town and you can bring us your old wine bottles and would gladly accept them. Currently, I'm part of the Ghana Climate Innovation Center. When you started your business, for example, how much did you need to inject into the business to get it to that level? My money was 40 CDs. I was playing my mom's beads at home and she got frustrated with me one day. She was like, take your money and let's go to Kofredia Bead Market. And this was 2008. Fast forward 2015, 16, when I really wanted to push more capital in it, about 5,000 went in in between 2015, 2016. Because at that point, you had to buy more materials, branding, social media, you know, mm. understanding the, the terrain probably. But initial capital was 40 Ghana cities. And now when you look back and you compare the returns to 
uh, your capital that you put in how is it turnover does it does it have you been able to break even and make profit oh yes yeah after um, almost three years definitely I've been able to um, break it even and make profits but it's Running a startup is a continuous investment. Let's take you back to 2008 before you started. If you had a chance to think of going into business, would you still choose beating? Yes. So that's how we conclude the movers segment today with me in my Colecore accessories. Join us again next week. Thank you for joining us. All right, thank you very much, Noam Fallon, for the Movers segment. Let's quickly do some, you know, uh, you know, preview of the uh, stock market as well as the commodities market and also the exchange rates. Clearly, as you, as you can see from the board, the currency, uh, the US dollar is buying for 5.27 and selling at 5.28. The British pound is also buying at 6.43 and selling at uh, 6.43 as well. Um, let's quickly return to look at the commodities market. And what do we have? Okay, so for the price of gold, gold uh, went down by 6, 9% and is currently selling 1,503. Quickly also to the price of cocoa, which is also down by uh, 0.9% and is selling at 2,185. So that's essentially giving you an overview, a preview of uh, the commodity market as well as the uh, the exchange rate. We'll take a short break and return to do some more analysis of this. Winslow Sakifios has joined us in studio to help us do some analysis of the stock market as well as the commodities market. All right, welcome back to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program. This is Business Focus Live here on TV3. I've just been joined in studio by Winslow Sakifio. He is... Uh, with First Bank Financial Services. Winslow, uh, quickly, we just did um, a preview of the stock market as well as the commodities market. Let's focus on the commodities market. Just briefly tell us what accounted for the marginal changes in the commodities in terms of the pricing. Okay, so for crude, uh, you know America has eased some of the pressure on uh, Chinese phone manufacturer Huawei. So right. uh, it brought a bit of relief on the market and it sort of boosted the price of crude oil because... Uh, when the sanctions were coming in, the outlook for the global market was very bearish. Now it looks like things are improving a bit, so demand for crude is expected to pick up. And that is why we are seeing the price of crude going up. For gold, uh, China has decided to impose tariff on U.S. crude and it's sort of bringing jitters to the market. So we are seeing gold prices also picking up. And China being the biggest importer of gold, they have reduce the restrictions on gold imports, so we expect demand to, to pick up. Mm. Cocoa is also seeing the same upward trend. You know, the price flaws that was agreed on uh, would uh, kick in in October. Absolutely. So as we are getting very close mm. to it, we are seeing the price of cocoa picking up slightly. And we expect it to do so until the flaw suddenly kicks in in October. Mm. All right, uh, Winslow, I'm afraid uh, we've got very little time. Uh, we've got to go. Thank you very much, Winslow Sakifio. So um, we will conclude with business trends right here. Are you celebrating a special location or just fancy a drink after a busy day? The Holiday Inn offers a large selection of alcoholic beverages for you to enjoy. Whatever your choice of drink at the bar, you won't be disappointed. Be it BS, spirits, liqueurs, whiskey and champagne, or an exotic cocktail, the resident mixologist will thrill you with classic cocktails like the Holiday Inn Special, Kingfisher, Blue Lagoon, Bellini, Chapman, a mojito, or Care Royale. For kids and those not wanting an alcoholic tipple, you will find a range of non-alcoholic cocktails and drinks to quench any thirst. The bar is also creative enough to whip up a custom drink just for you. All right, thanks, Noam, for business trends. Uh, let me quickly wrap up with uh, Winslow Sakifio, who is with First Bank Financial Services. Winslow, uh, we, uh, you know, earlier on the show, we talked about the impact of the financial crisis on the um, stock market. You know, briefly before we go, how what is the recovery like because clearly there's not been a good performance uh at the start of the year till now 
Yes, we've been in negative zone since we started the mm. year, and I think the financial crisis is not really helping the situation. Even though we are seeing some recoveries on the market, but we expect the negative to continue until there's a clear picture for the investor out there. So it all has to do with investment, investor sentiment? Yes, currently mm. it's very bearish, mm. and I don't think it will change significantly going forward. Mm. So we might close the year still in the negative. All right. Uh, so there's really nothing we can do at this time to help. It's, it's going to take a natural course to, uh, to it recover. It looks like investors are shifting more to the fixed income market, mm. especially government treasuries. Government and treasuries, right. That is where most of them will be as a comfort But of course, zone. return on investments have generally gone down as well, as we've seen interest rates go down. Yes, it? but yeah. it's, it's safer for investment safer, to right. do, mm. yes, mm. than to come to the stock market with a lot of uncertainties, mm. especially for financial stocks. You mm. know, most of the reforms in the financial market is geared towards the financial market right. and it looks like investments in those markets are not really doing well so, so what you're saying is that this peculiar performance with the stock market has generally to do with what has happened in the banking industry yes mainly okay yes. and okay. it's because investors are reacting to it to so it. Anytime there's an announcement for revocation of license and all that, you see that the market responds, uh, the prices go down, or the volumes that are sold are normally higher. Mm. Yeah. All, right. all right, thank you very much. Winslow Saki, if you're with First Bank Financial Services, that's how we wrap up for Business Focus tonight. Uh, God willing, same time next week, we'll come your way with yet another edition of the program. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks to the producers, the cameramen, as well as the directors. My name is Parquesi Asari. Stay tuned in.